for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got the start of a brand new offense from a brand new playbook for you guys today. The offense that I'm in today is the Arizona Cardinals. Now, if you guys want to see a bunch of fun offenses from this particular playbook, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, the formation I'm going to start this series off with is going to be the gun split slot. Now, there's three run plays that really make a dynamic offense. You can probably add a fourth, uh, which I'll show you guys. is a very specific run play towards very specific players. But the top three run plays are easily going to be the shovel option which is probably my favorite the halfback gut which is one of the more important ones but my second favorite is definitely the fullback inside there is a pretty good fourth play which is the halfback tackle for a fifth play if I had to pick a fifth play this is very specific this is what I meant by it's very specific to how a player plays if you have somebody that likes to shoot gaps inside zone splits are very good at stopping players that like to try to shoot gaps so that's something that you can definitely use if you're playing against people that like to do that as always this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors AOH.com if you guys are trying to get your mutt team up you're trying to do a, a last minute team build or you're trying to get the rookie premieres done uh, you don't have enough coins you don't have enough currency check them out link in the description below and use discount code money to get three percent off what's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market now one of the things that i like about this particular series of run plays and one of the reasons that's one of my more favorite to use other than the shovel option of course is the fact that you really can run this play in multiple different directions you this play the shovel option for one does appear to go mostly into one direction but you really can run it in multiple directions which i'll show you later in the video but based off the fact that that, the halfback gut, and the fullback inside all really go in multiple directions really makes this one of the better run play schemes to run in the game. Now, I'm going to start off with the shovel option. Like I was saying, it looks like you're forced to run it in one direction. But based off the fact that the quarterback can really go in any direction they want, if you want to change field, you really can. That's obviously not the best way to go, but it's something that you can do if you want, if you see something available, if you see something that can really you know benefit you. But ultimately, this is going to be a play. It's really all going to be about the pitch. This is something where ultimately if I want to run it with the quarterback I can but it's always going to be best to pitch it out to the RB route and then you can see here I mean on the very first real attempt I'm hitting a one-play touchdown against one of the better defenses in the game now I did make the mistake of not switching my running backs to something I probably should have did typically I want my power back where Edmonds is and my speed back where Connor is so if I could switch Edmonds to Connor spot and Connor to Edmonds spot that'd really be best but you can see here it doesn't matter as I score a one-play touchdown on that first run anyway ultimately the reason you want to do that is because you can pitch back inside although you do have a higher chance of fumbling and that's where you want your power back to be because typically you want a guy that can break tackles inside so i don't have my running backs in the right place but it really doesn't matter i'm still having a lot of success typically the pitch inside is dangerous though i'll try to pitch it you know the wrong way by mistake and you'll see you can have a lot of fumbles now there that looked like it was just an incomplete pass because that is typically considered a pass it's a pitch to it's a what do they call it a shovel pass so it can go incomplete but if you do it the wrong way, and I'll try to force it the wrong way, you can see that it can really result in loss of yards. It can result in um, you know other things like fumbles and stuff like that. So it's really not worth it to me to do that very often. Typically, it's best to just hold it with the quarterback or just basically pitch it to the running back. And the reason I kept the ball there is very simple. If we go to the replay, when it comes to the pitch, I'm only really looking for one thing. Is there a defender here who doesn't commit? If he commits to the quarterback, it's an easy read. I basically just pitch it to the running back. But if he doesn't, if he hangs out, in this area where he's basically waiting for the pitch I have to keep it with the quarterback and you can see I kept with the quarterback and there's still a lot of very successful run lanes to be had if I actually accelerate a little bit earlier maybe if I ran outside a little bit more I might have had a touchdown with the quarterback that's how explosive this play can be whether it's to the pitch or keeping it with a very fast quarterback you can have explosive runs all over the field with multiple players now while the shovel option is definitely the MVP and probably is the play you should run the most out of this formation they have some really good counter runs like the fullback inside and the halfback gut the fullback inside is definitely my favorite play out of all of them but if you have a tightly packed box like this you can also hit them with the off tackle the off tackle is going to be a very good look run to the outside as you'll see once again we get very good blocking to the edge here so another very explosive run the only thing about this particular run is it goes in the exact same direction as the shovel play so while it is a very good play, especially if you don't have any gaps because the halfback gut and the fullback inside are really going to rely on gaps, 
the halfback off tackle is somewhat limited based off the fact that I want to have something going in the opposite direction to catch my opponent off guard. But if there's no gaps, like I said, this is going to be the best run play there. That guy got through, but he didn't make the play. Ultimately, it's another very good play to the outside. Now, if you have gaps inside, though, this is really where it's going to be best to hit him with either the halfback gut or the fullback inside. The fullback inside is definitely going to be better. Because the shovel option and the halfback off tackle are all going in that direction, the fullback inside has the best, has the best opportunity to catch your opponent with their pants down, not expecting a counter run. So ultimately, this will be your best run. You typically get some pretty good blocking, and you take it wide in the exact opposite direction which will make it uh, something that will really, you know, drive your opponent up a wall because they're never going to know what angle the run plays are going. Even if you don't have like, a huge lane, like right here, I can run this against this and still have success based off the fact that it's just, to me, that good of a run play. This is one of the few. I don't think the halfback gut can really do that. And then last but not least, we have the halfback gut, which is very similar to the uh, fullback inside. I just feel like when you look at the diagrams, the fullback inside turns up the field a lot quicker. I feel like the halfback gut kind of forces you at a certain angle to get the handoff that you don't really get from anywhere else. So to me, I'm not a huge fan of that, you know, forced play art, but it's still a very good run. These pass plays are definitely OP. This isn't going to be like my typical one play touchdown video where I show you one play that hits a one play touchdown against every single video. Pretty much you need a different play against every single defense to hit a one play touchdown. So you got to be pretty good at reading defenses. The first play that I'm going to start off with is a very unique play that's really best against cover two zones. So since I typically start off with cover two zone, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna start off with this particular play here, the six, eight, nine hook. This particular play is something I've shown a lot in the past. It's just a very good play when it comes to um, pretty much any coverage. There is another specific round this play is very good against cover two zone. So let's go and let's pick that. We're gonna go, we're gonna pick cover two on the other side once again. The route that the B route is running is a very good cover two zone beater. You just have to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field because you will need some space for a throw, but you don't really have to make any adjustments. You'll see that typically the B route does a pretty good job of getting around the jam and then works its way back outside to the open spot in a cover two safety. The A route's a pretty good zone beater as well. If you put the X route on an outside uh, out route or a 10 yard out route, a lot of times the A route can get open right over the middle as well for a very big play if you time it correctly. So basically both receivers on the right side are very big plays against cover, cover two zone and potential one play touchdowns. So no real adjustments needed. The X route does keep the linebacker at home a lot of times, but like I said, it's a very, um, you know, you gotta time that throw very well uh, to make that play, but still very explosive plays going on here for cover two zone. Now this route is also very good against cover three and cover one man. Let's go and let's pick the six, eight, nine hook one more time. We're gonna pick a cover three sky. Once again, you have to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field because it's a cover three and a cover one, one play touchdown. But all you have to do is put the X route here on a five yard out route and then smart route about 10 yards, block the Y route for pass blocking. And this is gonna be it. The A route's gonna be an easy one play touchdown as you're gonna see as essentially, I mean, I gotta buy time in the pocket. That's probably gonna be the hardest part, but you can see how Hopkins basically gets across the safety and is, the cornerback is nowhere to be found. In Madden 22, these 10 yard out routes do a very good job of holding cornerbacks down. Like I said, the hardest part is gonna be pass blocking. So I do have a little extra pass pro. I typically like to roll in the direction of the throw, but you can see Hopkins definitely gets separation and it's an easy 50 yard bomb. If I had a faster receiver, it'd probably be even easier, but you can see it's a very easy one play touchdown. So that's a very glitchy play against cover two, cover three, and cover two man. Uh, we really didn't go over cover four or cover one. So let's go ahead and let's go over cover one first. For those defenses, you're gonna need a play like this, the PA flood, which is a very glitchy play highlighting a very glitchy route which i've been showing in a couple different plays recently let's go and let's pick that on the defensive side let's start off with cover one robber this particular play whether you're running it against cover one or cover four you're either going to want it from a hash mark to the open side of the field or at the very least motion this particular receiver in so you can get across the field as fast as possible other than that you just want to shorten the b route i would say just put the a route and the b route on drags you can put the a route on like a zig or something like that just make sure they're on short routes i can block both my running backs too i don't really need them doing either of the things they're doing Although if I put the Y route on a streak, that will help against cover one man, which is what I'm looking at right now. So at the end of the day, this is definitely a good look. You can see how the X route really just toasts the uh, the cornerback there. If I had a little bit of a faster receiver in that spot, that'd probably be optimal. Now I did go and put a faster receiver at the X spot. This particular route is very unique. I said it was like a route that I've shown in other plays, but it's really not because this particular route breaks twice. 
Now, at the very least, you want to run this from a hash mark to the short side of the field, but it would be best to motion this receiver in so it gets to go across the field as quick as possible. Other than that, you just need short routes. I can either put these guys on zigs, which will beat man, or drags, which will beat man, although I accidentally hiked the ball. <laughs> we're going to go ahead we're going to run it like this uh, based on the fact that I, I didn't mean to do that. But you can see this receiver gets across the, the man coverage. It gets across the safety. It's a very easy one-play touchdown. This play is probably best, though, against cover four. So let's go ahead and let's pick that again. On the defensive side, we have to leave this formation. We have to go to the dollar to find a, a natural cover for drop contain. So once again, all you really have to do is put the A route and the B route on drags, block your running backs one more time, and then I like to motion in this receiver one more time just so he gets across the field a lot quicker. This is, like I said, it's very similar to some routes that I've highlighted in previous videos where this X route, for whatever reason, just gets behind the cornerback for a very big play as we get a one-play touchdown. It's not the exact same route, but it has the exact same effect. But for whatever reason, the cornerback doesn't react to it properly and lets him get behind him. Now, if I had a slightly better receiver, I know this is a rookie, he's fast, but you can see he gets behind the cornerback before the cornerback can flip his hips, and it's a very easy catch and run one-play touchdown against pretty much any cover four. This this play, oddly enough, will have more success if you run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field. Some cover four bombs are like that. So if you run it from the hash mark to the short side of the field, you'll notice that you can have even more success because the cornerback and the safety just react differently based off of the fact that they're so condensed. You'll see here, once again, we have the exact same effect. Receiver gets past the cornerback, although here you just have less catch and run space. So that's pretty much the caveat. So the only defense we haven't really touched on is cover four quarters. Let's go and let's pick the PA flood one more time. We'll go back to our nickel and we'll find a cover four match in a cover four quarters right here. This play will have the exact same success against cover four quarters that did the man coverage. It'll essentially, um, you know, basically cross up the cornerback and the safety. You just have to make one adjustment. You just have to put the B route on a slant. That's all you really have to do. The slant will be enough to basically confuse the safeties and the cornerbacks. And you can see how the X route here basically just gets right past the cornerback who is really supposed to be covering them the entire time. If you don't make that slant adjustment, essentially the safety will help out. But you can see he's still, you know, even with that adjustment like that, even with just without making any adjustment at all, it still beats the coverage very easily. It's probably beneficial to motion this receiver in. If you saw in that last play, I did forget to make that slant adjustment. So basically the cornerback from the B receiver was pulled back in a position where he could still make a tackle. But uh, ultimately motion this guy in, I mean here, now he's just completely wide open. So this is definitely one of the glitchiest routes. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, none of the deep quarter coverage guys actually recognize that receiver at all. But this route is super glitchy when it comes to any type of man coverage, really has trouble with it. The slant is really just to keep from pulling back that cornerback, and it'll give you a good check down. If you motion in the, uh, the receiver, though, a lot of times he'll get completely forgotten by the safety and the cornerback and end up being covered by the linebacker or even nobody. As you can see right here, the linebacker, for whatever reason, thought it was his responsibility. Uh, it's just a super glitchy route that Cover 4 has a hard time covering. My my favorite is probably the PA wheel though. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. On the defensive side, we're going to start off with Tampa 2 and work our way back. This particular play here, you're going to want to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field, but there's not really a ton of adjustments you have to make. It's best to motion out this running back, which is going to look a little bit different than some of the run plays, but ultimately you can always hide that with fake motions and stuff like that. This is going to be the route though. The Y route is going to be super glitchy. you got a ton of really great checkdowns if you want to. The running back, the, the A route, the B route, all of them are really good checkdowns. But if you watch what happens with the Y route against cover 2, he essentially goes uncovered. The cornerback that's supposed to be responsible over here just completely bails on the assignment. If we watch the replay here, the, the route that uh, DeAndre Hopkins is running just completely pulls the cornerback in and leaves this area completely uncovered. You're going to get this look against a lot of different defenses. I mean, this is a super easy play. If you have a fast enough running back, you can possibly get up the sideline and realistically just have to beat one safety. But at the end of the day, this is just a very explosive play. I'll show you guys what happens one time if you don't motion out that running back. You'll see that the cornerback doesn't get pulled away. So it's really based off of the motion, although you can still have that success as far as a completion, but it's a much tighter window. So at the end of the day, it makes way more sense just to motion this guy out. It completely confuses the AI for whatever reason, and then you're going to see that this guy just gets completely wide open in one of the glitchier uh, routes in the game, which is the wheel route. And because this route is such a wide looping route, it really can have that success against just about any defense. So let's go and let's pick that again. On the defensive side, this time we're going to go and pick cover three. Making that same motion, you'll notice that he gets outside of the cover three uh, uh, curl flats pretty easily. I typically like to cancel that play action so I get that pass out quicker. And the window's not as big, but you can see it's still there. I would go as far as to even block 
the RB route just to take that play action away entirely because the quicker you get this ball out, the better when it comes to cover three and cover four defenses where there's curl flats that do a much better job of covering. But you can see I can still get that ball out for an easy catch and run. This play is probably more successful when it comes to man coverages though. So let's go and let's pick that one more time and let's pick cover two man, which is probably the hardest man coverage to have success against. Same setup and which is really to say there really is no setup. I'm going to block my running back again, my RB route, because he really doesn't do much against this particular play. And you'll see that the Y route, once again, because it loops so widely, will have a lot of success against just about any linebacker covering him. And it'll basically be the exact same as it was against cover two zone. Now, there is one more very good dink and dunk play on this formation. It's something that, like I said, every time I have a split back formation, this is something that's definitely one of my go-tos. And that's going to be the PAF slide. This is a front to back concept. I can use this against just about any defense in the game. And that's exactly what I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick random on defense. This is the type of play where just about every route should get open. You're really just going to work from front to back. The RB route is going to be your first read, then the A route, then the B route. Your check down is going to be the X route. If it's a man coverage, the RB route won't get open, but it'll get open against just about every single zone other than maybe hard flats which you'll have to watch out for but the a route should get open against about everything it should be open against man or zone so that's going to be definitely one of the safer reads in the game you can see it looks like we had i thought we had a man there for a second but ultimately it was not it looked like a hard flat like i said hard flats typically will give the rb routes problems but if it's a hard flat it'll even make it easier for the x route to be open so here we have that man coverage like i said hopkins route aside from the fact that he's an absolute animal in this game hopkins route will get open against just about everything especially man coverages any route that breaks twice like his route breaks twice will pretty much get open and then like i said you always have this guy out here who's going to get open it's just about every single man or zone as well so that's why he's your check down your last read but basically i'm going running back then i'm typically going a route this, i don't know what type of play that was because the running back was wide open for a huge catch and run uh, like i said this is this is what this play is really about it's a dink and dunk play but it can have really big results based off of what the defense gives you so even though every route here should pretty much get open you can really break it down to the rb route first if he's not open go to the a route if he's not open the x route will be one of these three routes will be open every single time although here it looks like we have an all-out man blitz so i can definitely hit that man beating route over the top uh, which is still kind of in the read structure based off the fact that you're going from front to back so that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see a full breakdown of this offense, you want to see more from this offense as a whole, the Cardinals, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching. Man, my shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.